Hello friends, welcome back to channel Neat Biology Expert. I am Dr. Parvi. In this lecture series, we are studying class 12 biology chapter principles of inheritance and variations. In this particular lesson, we are going to study about two important things, sex determination in human beings and X chromosome and male development. Right. First, let us move on to the first part of this lecture, sex determination in human beings. In our previous lesson, we have studied how sex is determined in organisms that is through chromosomes which we call as a sex chromosomes sex chromosomes determines the sex of the organism by four different methods so one of the method is xx xy type of sex determination which occurs in the human beings so this chromosomal mechanism of sex determination in human beings is called as xx xy type so when we see the chromosomes which are present inside these cells suppose take this as the cell the cell contain nucleus inside the nucleus we have chromosomes so how many number of chromosomes are present in human beings we have 46 chromosomes which exist in 23 pairs right so out of this 46 chromosomes 44 chromosomes are called as autosomes these 44 chromosomes are responsible for the bodily characters. That means they are responsible for our eye, heart, lungs, liver, other structures, functions and its development. Rest two chromosomes. These two chromosomes are called as allosomes or sex chromosomes. Allosomes or sex chromosomes. So they determine the sex of an individual, sex of the human beings. Right. So here female, suppose if a human being is a female the female has a pair of xx chromosome so we have two sex chromosome right a pair of chromosomes so in case of female the chromosome will be xx that we call as homomorphic sex chromosome so what is homomorphic homo means same homo means same morphology means external structure so the x chromosomes are same see here xx chromosomes are present in the females right so the structure of these two chromosomes are same the function is same so they produce gametes they also look same that means they produce x okay they look same so such chromosomes are called as homomorphic sex chromosomes which are present only in case of female whereas in male the sex chromosomes are of XY type. So, male has one X chromosome and another Y chromosome. So, two different chromosome combination X and Y. That's why male sex chromosomes are called as heteromorphic sex chromosomes. So, what do you mean by heteromorphic? Hetero means different morphology means a structure. Both the structure and function of these chromosomes are different. X and Y structure is different. Their function is different. So that's why male produces gametes with two different structures also with the two different uh, chromosome also. Okay, the sperms contains two different types of chromosomes. So male has XY type of chromosomes which we call as heteromorphic sex chromosome. Right, so when we see the genotypic nature of human beings in case of female, female has 44 autosomes that is the chromosomes responsible for the body characters 44 autosomes plus two sex chromosomes that is xx type so totally 46 chromosomes in case of female whereas in male similarly 44 autosomes plus two sex chromosomes which is of xy type so totally 46 so when you see the number of the chromosomes present in the male and female both these autosomes 44 44 they are same that's why all our eyes heart lungs liver all these characters all its functions are same in both male and female okay so only where the differentiation is there only in the characters in the sexual characters okay so, if it is XX, all the female body characters, the breast development, uh, uh, ovaries, all these things will be there. If it is XY, the masculine characters will be there. Gonads will be turned into testis, penis, like this. Okay. So, this is the genotypic determination here in the human beings. So, first, let us see what happens during gamete formation in male. So, during gametogenesis, that means in case of male, say it is spermatogenesis, right? So, where the sperm cells are produced. So, there, the deployed germ cells in the testis, they undergo spermatogenesis and produce two types of haploid sperms. So, see here, suppose if this is the testis, the testis 
contains the germ cells right the germ cells so which are deployed in nature so from the germ cells through spermatogenesis what are produced gametes what are the male gametes the male gametes are the sperms right so sperms are produced the sperms have haploid in nature because this is a meiotic division reduction cell division spermatogenesis is a meiotic process okay so during this process the gametes are produced which are the sperms in case of the male so the sperms are of two different types that means 50 percentage of the sperm contains x chromosome and 50 percentage of the sperms contain y chromosome understand so rest apart from this uh, sexual chromosomes the rest autosomes are same in both the sperms okay that's why it is written here 50 percentage sperms contain 22 autosomes and x chromosome while the rest 50 percentage sperms contain 22 autosomes and y chromosomes so this x and y chromosomes in uh, which chunks it will be present 50 50 in 50 percentage of the sperms it contain x chromosome rest 50 percentage of the sperm contains y chromosomes so this is what occurring in case of spermatogenesis let us see what happens in oogenesis what is oogenesis the production of the egg cell in case of the female right so in the female the deployed germ cell in the ovaries undergo oogenesis and produce only one type of egg so in case of female so if this is the ovary which contains the germline cells okay so when it produces the egg cell when it produces the egg cell so again this germline cells are deployed and the egg cell is haploid right haploid so this process is called as oogenesis so in case of oogenesis what happens the egg cell contain only x chromosome only one type of eggs are always produced in case of females okay so when you see male 50 percentage contains a gamete contains a y chromosome 50 percentage gamete contains x chromosome whereas in case of female 100 percentage whatever gametes that means whatever x cell produce all x cell contains only x as the sex chromosome okay so totally in the x cell 22 autosomes will be there and two sex chromosome that is two x chromosomes will be there okay right so that's why we call the human male is heterogametic why heterogametic because male produces sperms with two different types half of the sperm has x chromosome half of the sperm has y chromosome so heterogametic whereas the human female is homogametic because whatever the number of the x cell produced all the x contains same x chromosome only so male are heterogametic female are homogametic now during fertilization what will happen there is an equal probability equal chance of fertilization of the ovum with the sperm carrying either the x or the y chromosomes so what is the meaning for this suppose if this is the egg okay so if this is the egg so which sex chromosome will be present in the egg x chromosome right so this x chromosome x chromosome suppose if a sperm contains x chromosome when these two joints okay what will be the zygote the zygote will be of xx type so which will be a female baby okay female baby suppose if the sperm is y if the sperm is y so if this two joints what will be the uh, zygote the zygote will be x and y so this will be a male baby okay so that's why we say that there is an equal probability equal chance of fertilization we don't know whether the egg will be fertilized by x chromosome or y chromosome there is 50 50 percentage chance in every pregnancy of to produce a male zygote or a female zygote right now let us understand how the sex is determined in the human beings using this so look here we have seen male are heterogametic heterogametic means they have two different types of chromosomes so they produce two different types of gametes okay so female are homogametic they have same type of sex chromosome so they produce the same type of gametes okay so accordingly the parent here have 44 a what is a a means autosomes parent has 44 male has 44 autosome plus two sex chromosome that is x and y so totally 46 chromosome in the male 
and similarly here the female has 44 autosomes plus 2 sex chromosome x and x so totally 46 chromosome in case of male and female parents right now what happens when they produce the gametes now what will be the meiotic division will be there so reduction in the number of the uh, chromosomes right so the male could produce two different types of gametes so the sperm contain 22 autosome plus x chromosome or 22 autosome plus y chromosome so these are the two different uh, options in the case of the uh, sperms in the production and similarly when the female produces x okay so it contains 22 autosomes with x chromosome and again the another egg will also be 22 autosomes and x chromosomes so all the eggs here has only x chromosome whereas the sperms may have x also y chromosomes okay now when fertilization occurs so what are the different chances in which the offsprings or the progeny will be so let us put the combination suppose if the sperm contains the x chromosome combines with the egg contains the x chromosome what about the zygote the zygote will have 44 autosome 22 from father 22 from the mother right so totally 44 autosome plus 2 x chromosome then this will be a female baby understood and Similarly, suppose if the sperm containing 22 autosome and one Y chromosome fertilizes the egg containing 22 autosome and one X chromosome, what will be the zygote? The zygote will have 44 autosome and one X and Y chromosome. So, accordingly, this baby will be a male baby. Similarly, the third chance is suppose if the sperm containing 22 autosome and one X chromosome fertilizers an egg which contains 22 autosome and 1 x chromosome so here x and x will be a female baby okay and the fourth option is the sperm containing y chromosome if it fertilizes the egg with the x chromosome so the baby will have x y chromosome so it will be a male baby so the this is the same when we make a punnett square we will get like this okay so sperm and the egg okay here it will be x x so when you see 50 percentage of the children will be female and 50 percentage of the children will be male so these are the options 50 50 okay so these are the options so in order to understand better so look at this picture the female will always produce the egg containing only x chromosome only x containing uh, sex chromosome okay whereas the male produces the sperm with either x chromosome or y chromosome suppose suppose if the sperm with the x chromosome fertilizes the egg with the x chromosome so the baby will be xx that is a female baby suppose if the sperm with the y chromosome fertilizes the egg with the x chromosome so the baby will have x y chromosome then it will be a male baby okay so what do you understand here so the genetic makeup of the sperm determines the sex of the baby so what is determining the sex of the baby the genetic makeup of the sperm determines the sex of the baby not the egg okay so that's why in each pregnancy there is a 50 50 probability of having a female baby or having a male baby but unfortunately in indian society the women are always blamed for giving birth to a female children it is not so so scientifically speaking so male are responsible for determining because the sex of the children or the child is determined by the chromosomes present on the sperms not on the eggs so male are responsible for the sex of the child not women now let us move on to the second part of this lecture y chromosome what is y chromosome how this male development occurs so for this we have to understand the difference between x and y chromosome okay so look at this picture this is an electron microscopic uh, picture of the x and y chromosomes chromosomes we can very much uh, give color to the chromosomes we can stain the chromosomes and see under the microscope so this is the electron microscopic picture of the x chromosome and y chromosome so this is x chromosome and this is y chromosome so by looking at the external morphology the x chromosome looks like the shape of the x right so that's why it was named as x chromosome who discovered x, x chromosome we know henking the scientist called henking he discovered x chromosome y chromosome was discovered by 
Stevens. Stevens. Okay. This is a lady. Her full name is Nettie. Nettie Stevens. Okay. So Hen King discovered X chromosome. Nettie Stevens discovered Y chromosome. So let us see the differences between X chromosome and Y chromosome. So in order to understand easily the differences between the X and Y chromosome, I made the differences in a table form. Okay. So it is uh, very much easy to understand. So see this is the X chromosome and Y chromosome. First shape. The X chromosome is straight, rod like and long in size. The size of the X chromosome is long. Okay. Straight. Whereas Y chromosome it is short, comparatively shorter. And what is the size? The size of the X chromosome is 165 MB. Whereas Y chromosome is only 60 MB. Okay. Since the size of the X chromosome is larger, it contains more number of genes, right? So, it contains about 1000 functional genes. There are many other genes also. Here, we are telling only functional genes. It contains 1000 functional genes. Whereas, in case of Y chromosome, it contains 60 functional genes. This is easy to remember. See, Y chromosome size is 60 MB and also 60 functional genes are present in the Y chromosome. And coming to the shape, X chromosome is metacentric, Y chromosome is acrocentric. So, what is this? So, I will draw here a chromosome, okay. So, see here, this is a chromosome. So, what is the center part? The center part is called a centromere, right. So, these two are the chromatids, okay. So, if the two chromatids are equally placed from the centromere, this structure is called as metacentric metacentric so x chromosome is of metacentric type whereas in case of y chromosome one arm or one chromatid of the y chromosome is larger and another chromatid is shorter okay so it is not equal from the centromere so this type of structure is called as acrocentric acrocentric understand so y chromosome is acrocentric and both the X and Y chromosomes show homologous and non-homologous region. So, what is homologous region? Look at this picture here. So, this is the X chromosome. This is the Y chromosome. Okay. So, this region is called as homologous region. Whereas, these regions are called as non-homologous region. Homologous regions means the genes present on both the regions are same in the homologous region okay so here whatever present in this region and whatever present in this region in both the x and y chromosome are same that's why this is called homologous region whereas whatever present here on the x chromosome and here on the y chromosome they are different the genes are different so these regions are called as non-homologous region okay got it and the non-homologous region is longer and contain more genes yes see here this is the x chromosome non homologous region so since this region is longer the number of genes present is more naturally and since the y chromosomes non homologous region is shorter the number of genes present are few or less okay then x linked genes are present on the non homologous region and y linked genes are present on the non homologous region see this is the X chromosome, right? So, whatever the characters responsible for the X chromosome, those genes are present in this non-homologous region. Similarly, whatever characters responsible for the Y chromosome, those genes are present on this region, okay? So, here these two are almost same. That's why we call this as homologous region. Got it? Now, the other important point is the X chromosome has large amount of euchromatin and a small amount of heterochromatin whereas y chromosome has small amount of euchromatin and large amount of heterochromatin so what is this what is euchromatin and heterochromatin so we know that chromosomes are dna dna chains they are tightly coiled and packed right so when the dna chains are tightly coiled and packed in a condensed form the structure is what we call as chromosomes this packing has two types. If the packing is slightly loose in like this structure, okay, this type is called as euchromatic, okay. Whereas if the DNA is tightly in a condensed form, this structure is called as heterochromatic. These are the two different uh, structures present in the chromosomes depending upon how much the DNA is condensed, okay. So, here in the X chromosome, the euchromatin region is larger whereas the heterochromatin region is smaller. So, I will tell you a few slides later what is this exactly the euchromatin and heterochromatin. 
Okay. Now, let us move on to the next differences between X and Y chromosome. So, look at this picture. This long chromosome is the X chromosome and this short chromosome is Y chromosome. Now, we are here comparing the X and Y chromosome in order to understand better what is the Y chromosome and what determines the male characteristics in the Y chromosome. Okay, right. So, the first important point is in both the X and Y chromosomes, the end, the end part contain a region called pseudo-autosomal region which are present in both the chromosomes. Okay. So, this is the Y chromosome, right. So, in the Y chromosome, if you see here this region, okay, and also here both in the terminal region, there is a few sequences of gene, a cap-like structure. This structure is called as pseudo-autosomal region, okay. So, in this region, in short, we call this as PAR, pseudo-autosomal region. In this region, there are about 29 genes are present, okay. So, whatever is present at the top, we call this as PAR, pseudo-autosomal region 1 and this is PAR2, okay. This is in the Y chromosome. Similarly, X chromosome, X chromosome also has PAR region 1 and PAR region 2. The same 29 number of chromo uh, genes are also present in this X chromosome. Understand? So, both the end of the X and Y chromosome has a short region that is called a pseudo autosomal region which contains around 29 genes why we call this as pseudo autosomal region see we have seen chromosomes are of two types autosomes and sex chromosomes autosomes means the chromosomes responsible for body characters sex chromosomes means which determines the sex of the organisms the autosomes are same in both male and female so whenever it inherited get inherited from father to mother uh, father to the children so, it will be the same. The genes will be the same. Okay, right. Same same thing happens here in case of PAR sequences. So, when the PAR sequences get inherited, the sequences are same like the parents. The genes will not change. Okay, the, that's why we call this as pseudo autosomal region. What do you mean by pseudo? Pseudo means false. False. They act like false autosomal region but Actually, they are present on sex chromosome only. So, that's why we call this as pseudo-autosomal region. What is the importance of this region? So, whenever, whenever recombination occurs, that means whenever synapsing or cross-linking occurs between the X and Y chromosome, at which region it uh, combined means only in this PAR region. Okay, got it. So, whenever crossing over occurs between the X and Y chromosome, the crossing over occurs between the PAR regions only, like this, only between the PAR region. That means the genes from here go here and genes from here come here, recombination occurs. In rest of the region, the crossing over will not occur because these are completely different in case of X and Y chromosome. So, we know that when crossing over to occur, the genes must be same, homologous, right? So, that region is only this PAR region, okay? So, we have seen that in the Y chromosome, PAR region is present. So, it constitutes 5 percentage, okay, 5 percentage on the top, some 2 and half percentage on the bottom, 2 and half percentage. So, totally 5 percentage. The rest, apart from this PAR region, the rest part of the Y chromosome is called as non-combining region of the Y chromosome. That is in short, NRY. Okay, look here, non-combining region of the Y chromosome, NRY region. Why it is called as non-combining region? Because they will not join with the X, uh, X chromosomes other region. They will not participate in the crossing over. Only this part participate in the crossing over, right? So, this is called the combining region and this regions are called as non-combining region. So, similarly, non-combining region is present in the X chromosome also. Okay, got it. And so, this non-combining region is 95 percentage. So, 95 percentage of the Y chromosome contain non-combining region and 5 percentage contain this PAR region. Okay, got it? Right. Now, in the non-combining region, we have two divisions. So, one is called as euchromatin, another is called as heterochromatin. So, previously I told you, you know, euchromatin and heterochromatin, what is the difference? Loosely coiled 
packed uh, DNA and the tightly packed DNA. Okay, the same thing. So the U chromatin, the U chromatin contains functional genes. Okay, all the functional genes of this Y chromosome are present in which region? U chromatin region. And all the non-functional genes are present in which region? In the heterochromatin region. Got it? So, there are two regions in the Y chromosome. Okay, so one is called functional region and another is called non-functional region. Functional region contains the genes responsible for the Y chromosome specific characteristics, male characteristics. Non-functional genes do not have any functional uh, job. It is inert. In, it is inactive. So, such non-functional genes are tightly packed. That's why they are called as heterochromatin. And functional genes are loosely packed. They are called as euchromatin. Got it? So, both the functional genes and non-functional genes are present in where? They are present in the NRY region. That is non-combining region which is 95% in a Y chromosome. The rest is the pseudo autosomal region which is 5%. Got it? Right. So, do you remember in the previous table, I told you the differences between this uh, X and Y chromosome where the X chromosome contained large amount of U chromatin and Y chromosome contains small amount of U chromatin. So, now let us see this. See, this is X chromosome, this is Y chromosome, right? So, the X chromosome contains large amount of U chromatin. That means, see this light blue color region. So, these are the functional genes present in the X chromosome, which is more because the size of the X chromosome is large. And whereas, these are the functional genes present in the Y chromosome, this region is less because the size of the Y chromosome is short. Okay. So, this is the one difference. And another difference is just vice versa. So, in the X chromosome, the heterochromatin is small, whereas in the Y chromosome, the heterochromatin is larger. Okay, so what is heterochromatin? The non-functional region. So, this gray color region is more in case of Y chromosome, whereas it is less in case of X chromosome. This is one difference you must remember. Okay, now let us move on to the important part of this topic. That is, in which region or which gene of the Y chromosome is responsible for the male character? So, what is giving the male character to a male? That is SRY gene, which we call as sex determining region Y. Okay, sex determining region Y. That is called SRY gene. See, in the Y chromosome, we see that this blue color is the functional region U chromatic. So, here at the top, there is one specific gene which I am highlighting now. This gene is called as SRY sex determining region of the Y chromosome. This gene, if this gene is present, then only we call this chromosome as Y chromosome. Then only the baby or the zygote will be a male. Understand? So, the Y chromosome contains the SRY genes, whereas X chromosome do not contain or SRY gene is absent in the X chromosome. Got it? So, the main character is determined by which gene? SRY gene present in the Y chromosome. How, how it determines? That is the important thing. So, look at this picture. So, if this is XY. XY means what? XY is male, right? So, the male contains one X chromosome and one Y chromosome. So, X chromosome do not have SRY gene whereas Y chromosome contain SRY gene. Okay. So, the gene produces a protein. You know that gene, they encode proteins, right? DNA encodes protein. So, this SRY gene, it encodes a protein. The name of the protein is called as testis determining factor. TDF, testis determining factor. Okay. So, this determines the character in a male. So, exactly the SRY gene, if it normally takes place at the 6 to 8 weeks after the fetus formation. That means when the baby is in the womb of the mother up to 6th week, the gender of the baby is not determined. We don't know whether the baby will turn into a male baby or a female baby, fetus. Okay, because we don't know what type of chromosome will be present in that baby. Suppose if the chromosome present in the baby is of Y chromosome. Okay, so see here this is a zoomed picture. So the Y chromosome contains a specific region called SRY gene. This gene encodes a protein. What is the name of the protein? That is 
test is determining factor. TDF is the protein. So what it does? The TDF protein go and influences the development of the gonads. This is the gonad of the baby at around 6 weeks. Okay, the gonad is not differentiated. So it will be uh, small in structure. Okay, so if this TDF go and act, okay, so this will influence it and they become testis. The gonad is the unmatured sex organ in a fetus. So if the testis determining factor is produced, we go and act on the gonad, then it develops into testis, male sex organ testis. Okay. Then what will happen? The testis produces the male hormone. Which hormone? Testosterone. Testis produces testosterone. Then testosterone triggers the development of the external male organ that is penis. Penis development will be there. Okay. Sperms will be produced like this. So this male, this baby will be a male baby. So what is determining the character of the baby as a male or female, the SRY gene present on the Y chromosome. The SRY gene produces testis determining factor which around 6 to 8 weeks of fetal development. It produces the protein which go and triggers the gonads, the gonads of the fetus. So if it is triggered, the gonad will become testis, testis produce testosterone, testosterone is responsible for the male character. Penis and other male character will be developed and the baby will be a male baby. Got it? Suppose, suppose if there is no testis developing factor. That means if there is no SRY gene. That means the chromosome is X chromosome. Look here. Only if the chromosome is Y chromosome, the baby will be a male baby. Suppose if the chromosome is both XX. Okay. There will be no SRY gene. So the gonads will not be triggered. So, if the gonads are not triggered, naturally, naturally what will happen? Ovaries will be developed. Okay. The baby will be a female baby. So, only if it is triggered, the gonads will turn into testis. If it is not triggered, automatically the baby will be a female baby. Got it? So, this is how the Y chromosome will work and male development occurs. Okay. So, this is the sex determination in human beings. So, I hope this lecture is clear for you. Our next lesson will be about sex determination in honeybee. So, if you like this lesson, like, comment, share and subscribe to our channel Neat Biology Expert. Thank you.